Should you use a passive probe or an active probe? Stay tuned as we unveil this probing mystery. Deciding which oscilloscope probe to use for your next measurement can be an overwhelming task. With so many different probes out there, it can get pretty confusing what the difference between two different probes is. But you can think about it like this. There's really just two main types of oscilloscope probes, passive and active. Passive probes are your general purpose probe. They're the most widely used oscilloscope probe. They're economical and they're rugged and they're typically what you're gonna find shipping with your oscilloscope. The internal design of these two types of probes is quite different and it really comes down to one thing, power. Passive probes do not require any power. Inside of the probe head, you'll find resistors and capacitors. But with an active probe, it does require power. There's active components inside of the probe head. So you'll find transistors instead of resistors. And you'll also typically find an amplifier. So how is this power source used in an active probe? Well, in the probe head, you'll typically find signal filtering and amplification. But you'll also find the ability for some automation between an active probe and an oscilloscope. And this automation is possible because of this autoprobe interface. So when you plug in the probe, your oscilloscope will actually automatically detect what type of active probe has been plugged in and make some adjustments. And you can see this auto sensing capability when you plug in the active probe, turn on channel two and hit probe. You'll see the type of probe listed here with the attenuation factor and it's automatically detected the units in which the probe is measuring. And depending on the type of active probe, there might be some other auto configuration that's done on the part of the oscilloscope as soon as the active probe is plugged in. And this difference in the design of these two types of probes leads to a difference in performance. Passive probes are great for general purpose measurements. If you need to take a quick quantitative measurement or if you're working in DC up to low frequency ranges, a passive probe is probably the right choice for you. This is because of the wide dynamic range of passive probes and that they go up in bandwidth to around 500 megahertz. Now you may see passive probes that have bandwidths even higher, maybe one gigahertz. But as you get into these higher frequencies, even if your signal does technically fall within the bandwidth range of the probe, you start to see a performance degradation. And this is due to the idea that impedance and frequency are related. So on the x-axis here, we have frequency and on the y-axis, impedance. And if we compare a passive probe and an active probe, you'll see up to a certain frequency, impedance is pretty flat. But there is a crossover point at around 10 kilohertz where the passive probe starts to significantly decrease in impedance compared to the active probe. And you may be wondering why this difference in impedance occurs. And in this relatively high frequency range, it has to do with capacitance. The lower the capacitance, the higher the impedance, and therefore the less loading. So we're looking for a small capacitance value. And with an active probe, we're just able to keep it significantly smaller due to that active circuitry that's inside of the probe. It's just physically not possible with a passive probe. With an active probe, you get a superior level of performance that may be essential in certain circumstances. So make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so you'll be notified about our next Probing Mysteries video. And if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, make sure you let us know in the comments or you can message us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. I'm Allie with Keysight Technologies and I'll see you next time.